Here in Northern California, when we think about fly fishing for bass on foot, typically some sort of a bass pond or some sort of a creek will come to mind. What we tend to overlook are all the major canyon reservoirs in the state, which are pretty close for most people. For myself, this is what's most appealing about fly fishing for bass, is it's all relatively local. We're privileged here in Northern California to have so many great bass fisheries around us, and we do hold world records. This is something that many fly fishermen tend to overlook. Maybe we're still too bitter about the dams, which weren't built too long ago in the overall scheme of things. A very justified bitterness, though. But the solitude out here is very appealing in comparison to the pretty chaotic environments on some of the rivers these days. When I was growing up, I put a lot of time in on Puta Creek. Puta is a tailwater fishery that comes out of Lake Berryessa. Uh, it's a typical tailwater deal where Berryessa is full of warm water and Puta is real cold. So when we had slow days for trout out there, uh, sometimes we'd head up the, up the road a little ways and go to the lake. We'd attempt our fly tactics out there and usually weren't too successful. Didn't know too much about what we were doing. We were just kind of throwing intermediate lines, stripping in woolly buggers. Uh, we'd catch fish here and there, nothing too much, uh, nothing really worth going out there specifically for. It was just something we'd kind of do on the side. Knowing what I know now, we could have had a heck of a lot more fun back then. So that's why I want to get this information out. Might be able to turn some slow trout days into great bass days. Now I'm not pro dam at all, but most of our trout and steelhead rivers out here are tailwater fisheries like Puta Creek and Berryessa. So this type of stuff is a real viable option for a lot of people. Bass can make for a great plan B. This is gonna be a three part video where I'll lay out information that I would have dreamed of before I owned a boat. This is part one. Part two I'll focus on topwater fly presentation and structures to fish. And part three I'll go over the float and fly or indicator tactics. With streamer fishing, takes can be very questionable and we'll lose a lot of flies to snags. This isn't the case with topwater and indicator fishing out here though. These two methods alone will have you covered for 12 months out of the year. boat definitely helps, but I've honestly found some of my favorite spots from just walking the banks in the evenings. So now I take my boat back there of course. As far as rods go, 6 weight 9 footers are my favorite. You can get away with anything from a 4 weight to 7 weight though. Very few snags out here so the lighter rods can be a lot of fun. Real high quality rods and reels aren't too important for this kind of stuff. Especially the reels because all the fish are stripped in anyways. One of the most important things, boat or no boat, is to have a real quality fly line and one that's balanced out properly on your fly rod. Uh, sometimes uplining does good, so a 7 weight line on a 6 weight rod. Uh, nymphing weight forward lines are usually pretty good, but my favorite are the uh, Rio outbound shorts. Uh, these lines do me real good and no need to upline for them. The next most important thing is a good stripping basket. These can be easily made or found in most fly shops. These are really important and I can't stress this enough. If you don't have one, your line's going to be getting all snagged and tangled on rocks. It's not good for the line. It's not enjoyable. Uh, the stripping baskets make a huge difference, no doubt. Wear some good boots. I'm not setting a good example by wearing flip flops in this footage. The next most important thing to consider is the time of day that you're fishing. You can hit a great topwater bite all day long, but there's usually prime windows, 
Sometimes they're as short as a half hour, other times they're as long as three hours to four hours plus. Bass out here feed heavily on bait fish. As far as flies go for deep canyon reservoirs, my favorites are diving bait fish patterns. Uh, white's always my go-to color. Some of my favorite patterns out here come from the company Delta Bass Bugs. They're uh, an independent, family-owned tying business. They do amazing work with balsa wood. Very light flies, yet they're bulky. My favorite flies from them for the Deep Canyon Reservoirs are the Pulse Popper Bullet Headed Slider and the Deer Hair Divers in the Tan Slider and Tan Diver. They can be purchased at DeltaBassBugs.com and they're very reasonably priced. Pole Dancers are another top fly that can be found in most fly shops. I like the smallest ones, the number two. Uh, favorite colors are rainbow and uh, brown and white. Watch your back cast with these though. They're really expensive and the rocks will jack them up. The Murdoch Minnow is another great fly that can be found in most fly shops. Not a top water fly, but it does good stripped about a foot under the surface on a floating line. Great for visual takes. For leaders, I just use Maxima Ultra Green, about seven feet total. First half of the leader is 20 pound test, second half is 10 pound test with the lefty cray loop knot to the fly. For pole dancers I like 5 foot leaders with a swivel in the center. 